What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Katia and Gert that are currently meandering in the Atlantic, but the main show for today is Invest 95L that is continuing to rapidly organize and rapidly uh, get its act together. We're going to go ahead and zoom in on that and... We're gonna, sorry, we're going to go ahead and zoom in on that on the eastern Atlantic just to give you a closer view. So this is what we have right here for the tropical system. This thing looks a lot healthier than it did yesterday. We're going to go ahead and go back 240 frames just to give you an understanding of what we were looking at. So this thing just comes off the coast of Africa. Convection dies off considerably, but then things start to really ramp up again in the overnight, and things start to calm down, but then things start to ramp up again. It's a slow process, but then things start to rapidly go, uh, go strong once again here on Invest 95L. So that's the evolution for you one more time. It's, it's going to be a multi-day process. However, the NHC has been paying a very close attention to this, and here's what they're having right now. We now have a 90% chance of development in the next seven days for Invest 95L. So we're going to go ahead and read this out for you guys just so you understand what we're looking at. Showers and thunderstorms associated with a tropical wave located several hundred miles southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands have become better organized since yesterday. Environmental conditions are forecasted to be conducive for further development, and the system is expected to become a tropical depression around midweek. Additional strengthening is likely late in the week while it move while the system moves westward to west northwestward at 15 to 20 miles per hour over the central and western portions of the tropical Atlantic. 50% chance of formation in the next 48 hours, 70% chance in the next nine uh, sorry 90% in the next 7 days. So, this is a huge jump from earlier. We were at 3070 earlier. Now we're up to 5090 due to all the convection and all the organization that's going on. And this is what they're also saying right here. Pay very close attention to what I say right here. Additional strengthening is likely late this week. So, the NHC is not only saying that this thing's going to develop, but they're saying that this thing's likely going to strengthen, and we have models to back that up. So we're going to go ahead and show you some of the operational models. We'll get to the hurricane models later as we are starting to uh, trickle out. So here's the European model right here. So we're just bear with us as we go through these operational models first. And we'll, I'll give you a kind of rundown as to what I think may or may not happen. So here's what we have going on. The European has the system organizing and de potentially developing in the next 48 hours or so. And then it starts strengthening as we get to, uh, down to about four days. It's about a strong tropical storm as we get here. And then things start to really take off as we continue to move closer and closer to the Antilles. The European is forecasted for this thing to move a bit north of the Antilles and mainly stay out to sea. But the pressure it gets down to is 937 millibars by 216 hours out on the zero z so those runs earlier where we were looking at 925 940s the european still doubling down on that however the, what's different about the european is it is the only model that is expecting this to stay out to sea and then curve to the north prematurely before it impacts the united states so that's the big thing we have right there and we'll go ahead and next show you this. The GFS uh, will show you the Z uh, they'll show you the zero Z GFS to kind of give you an idea of what it's thinking. The GFS has the staying more to the south. However, it is there. They are forecasting this to mainly stay at tropical storm, a tropical depression strength as it moves through Puerto Rico, the, the Dominican Republic, and potentially Cuba before it emerges into the Bahamas right here. And then it's, it remains a tropical storm pretty much throughout its whole existence right here as time continues to go on. I'm not trusting this run of the GFS because of this, this right here. And I think everyone needs to remember this phrase. Models are one thing, but conditions are a whole other ballpark. We are moving, like, this system is moving through probably the best conditions of the season so far. And this is why I'm so concerned about it. And this is why the NHC that said that likely, strengthening is likely to continue as the system moves through the main development region. That's uh, that's my big concern about this. We'll go ahead and show you the CMC right here. Here is the Zero Z CMC, just to give you an idea of what's going on. Zero Z CMC has this thing organizing and developing, has this thing hitting the Leeward Islands, Virgin Islands, moving north of Puerto Rico, similar to what Hurricane Irma did back in 2017, and then starting to turn a bit more to the north as it approaches the Bahamas, and then drifts out more or less out to sea 
as of right here. However, it's a little too early to confirm or deny whether this is happening. I've been looking at the models, and they've been the hurricane systems have been trending more and more to the west due to a potential strengthening of the Bermuda High. So that's something we need to pay attention to, and the Bermuda High drives a lot of these uh, steering currents that allows this thing to actually get to the U.S. So we'll have to wait and see if this turn is premature or not. We'll go ahead and pull up the icon run for you as well. Here is the icon. This thing starts to organize. It gets down to strong tropical storm strength at some point. However, by the time it approaches the Antilles, it's expected to be a 999 millibar tropical storm, according to the icon. Again, I don't trust that because the conditions are the best they have been this season. So we'll have to wait and see what uh, what the other runs are going to say. So here's what we have for the track models, and here we also have the intensity models. Track models, as of 12Z, has this thing mainly moving west to west northwestward. It's a little too early uh, to really say if this thing's going to be approaching the Lesser Antilles or not, but it is heading towards that general direction. And now here are the intensity runs. This is why I'm not so inclined to trust the GFS and the ICON. The intensity runs are calling for tropical storm strength at first, and then some of them, a lot of them are actually getting up to Category 3 strength as we continue. Some, including the HMON and HWARF, get up to Category 4 strength, and the HAFBI has this as a Category 5 hurricane with uh, 145 knots or 165 miles per hour. I'm not sure if it's going to get that strong or not. It's definitely something we need to pay attention to. However, I do, I'm do. i not ruling out anything major hurricane strength due to the conditions. What are those conditions, Patrick? You've been talking about it all video. What are the conditions you're referring to? Here's what I'm referring to. Global sea temperatures from the pretty much all the Atlantic Ocean are 28 plus or degrees Celsius or 82 plus degree Fahrenheit water temperatures from the coast of Africa all the way to the United States. There's n not really that much water below that. So this is what we have right here. And a lot of the main development region is at over 30 plus degrees Celsius or 86 plus degree Fahrenheit. So this is something to continue to monitor. And especially if it moves into the southern, into the south, uh, northeastern Caribbean right here, where I've seen there's quite a bit of ocean heat content over there. And ocean heat content, as you guys have been talk, I've been talking about, it's really the gas that goes into this hurricane right here and how fast it can intensify. So for the fir first half of the MDR, there's not very much ocean heat content, maybe around 50, 75 max. But uh, even still, that's still a pretty large amount for that portion of part of the Atlantic. And then as you continue to move through into the western half, things really start to ramp up to around 100, 125, even 150 OHC in some areas over there. So this is definitely something we need to continue to monitor as time continues to progress. Last thing we need to show you guys is the wind shear. The wind shear across the Atlantic Basin and across the main development region, if we go ahead and pull that up, go ahead and go to the eastern Atlantic, pretty good conditions. The wind shear weakened over the last day or so in the, in the eastern main development region. This system will have no issues organizing, no issues developing, no issues strengthening, all the way up until it gets to uh, to the Antilles, unless the storm gets in its own way. So that's our big situation we have going on here, folks. Now we're going to go ahead and show you the shear and moisture forecast brought to you by the European model from the Zero Z, just to give you a better understanding of what we're looking at. Here's the shear forecast right here. The shear is pretty much weakened considerably across a lot of these areas, and it's going to remain pretty weak all the way for the next five days or so. So here's where we're at, about 48 hours out. The system starts to organize about, uh, about four days out. Still very low wind shear. There appears to be some wind shear impacting it to the south. However, that's mainly inflow and outflow, as we've discussed right here. We'll go ahead and next show you the moisture component right here in a very deep moisture pocket. There is surrounded by dry air to the north, east, and west, but I don't think it's going to be that big of an issue if this system stays in that moisture pocket and it can easily fight off all that dry air that's going on. Definitely something to monitor for sure. However, uh, it's, however, I'm not, I'm not seeing a, really a dry air intrusion at this time. So now we're going to go ahead, go about five days out. So this is when things really start to kick off, according to the European inflow and outflow. Wind shear is great from here all the way until it gets to the Bahamas, and then things continue to ramp up in intensity. Once, let's go ahead and go down to the 937 millibar situation. A lot of this is outflow right here. There is some wind shear right here to the north of it, If it, especially if it turns uh, prematurely. It definitely could impact that 
early on. However, we're going to go ahead and show you the moisture forecast in a deep moisture pocket. It's I'm not I don't have really any issues with dry air. I don't really see that. So neither does the European. That's why they're really showing the strengthening. So that's where I wanted to go ahead and show you guys. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some hurricane models that we have pulled up right here. We're going to go ahead and start with the HMON. Uh, go ahead and start with the 6... Actually, it's all the 12Z models are now out. So we'll go ahead and show you the 12Z models. Here is the HMON right here. The HMON has a system organizing and developing. It's going to take a couple of days, but by, but when it does, it's going to start strengthening at a pretty decent rate right here, according to the 12Z HMON right here. It gets down to a 980 millibar system 90 hours out. That's already a hurricane strength, and we go ahead and show you the intensity models. It kind of checks out with... Uh, how the system is going to be uh, going forward. So then the system continues to strengthen, continues to rapidly intensify, gets down to a 940 millibar Category 4 hurricane in the main development region. And this is why I'm so worried about it, because even if this does not directly impact the Antilles, they are still going to get a lot of impacts from this. And that's the main concern I have going forward. So that's our HMON run. Right here, again, this is five days out, so it's not going to be impacting the Antilles just yet. I'd say in the next seven days or so, they could start seeing that. Next one we're showing you is the HAFSA, and the 12Z is out, so we'll go ahead and show you that. Here's the HAFSA run, organizing, developing. It's going to take a few days before that happens, and then things start to ramp up, starts to strengthen down to a hurricane, and then get rapidly intensifies 970s, 960s, down to 954 millibars. That's, that's around a Category 3 hurricane right there mid high range category three according to what I've uh, the, what I've been seeing and if we go ahead and pull up some of the winds right here yeah, what I'm looking at we're looking at a flight level 110 knots or so so that's indicative of around major hurricane strength if that thing mixes down perfectly to the surface over there so that's the HAFSA HAFSB system right here organizing developing starts to intensify pretty rapidly in the next three days or so and then things really start to take off once it uh, gets into those very warm waters and extreme OHC uh, areas right there gets down to the 951 945 millibars and if we go ahead and pluck a sounding from this whole thing if we take a look at this this is already 125 knots at the surface and for those of you who don't know how much 125 knots is that's 145 miles per hour so that's a category uh, that's a mid-range category 4 hurricane they're calling for already and that's a very concerning trend i am noticing with all of these models so this is why i'm paying so much attention to it last one we're going to go ahead and show you is the h wharf unfortunately the h wharf isn't uh, fully out yet but we'll show you the first 90 hours or so so the h wharf has this thing organizing and developing and then starts rapidly intensifying in the next three days or so it gets down to the 980s 970s starts seeing the, a, a purple ring of 80 plus uh, flight level wind knots and then it gets around to the 960s or so, then back up to 970. So we'll have to wait and see what the rest of those uh, hours come out as, and we'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor ch uh, channel for sure. But with that being said, we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.